Have you ever pondered the possibility that the horrific 9-11's attacks were in fact an inside job? This question, while unsettling, is one that has lingered in the minds of many, sparking a surge of conspiracy theories that have found fertile ground in the aftermath of that fateful day. One of the most prominent theories suggests that the Bush administration, in power at the time, orchestrated or at least knowingly allowed the attacks to occur. The reason? To justify the subsequent wars in Afghanistan and Iraq? This theory, born from a combination of skepticism, doubt, and the sheer scale of the tragedy, has found resonance with a significant number of people. So what makes this theory so appealing to some? Well, it's a combination of factors. The immediate aftermath of 9-11 saw the United States and its allies embroiled in wars on two fronts, both of which were contentious and resulted in significant loss of life. Many believe that the Bush administration needed a compelling reason, a pretext if you will, to wage these wars, and that 9-11 provided just that. But let's delve deeper. What evidence is there to support such a claim? The truth is, very little. While questions abound, concrete proof remains elusive. The 9-11 Commission report, the most comprehensive investigation into the attacks, found no evidence of complicity or active involvement by elements within the U.S. government. Yet, the theorists persist, pointing to perceived inconsistencies, alleged cover-ups, and what they see as convenient coincidences. And it's not just the wars. Theories also focus on the rapid and near-total collapse of the Twin Towers, the Pentagon strike, and the role of influential figures in disseminating these ideas. Each of these aspects, they argue, raises questions that the official narrative fails to adequately answer. This theory, while popular, is just the tip of the iceberg. As we delve deeper into the conspiracy playground, we'll encounter even more mind-boggling claims and contentious narratives, each adding another layer of complexity to an already convoluted tale. But remember, in the face of such controversy, it's crucial to separate fact from fiction, reality from illusion. After all, history's most significant events deserve scrutiny, without succumbing to the allure of baseless conspiracies. Ever heard of the theory that the Twin Towers collapse was a controlled demolition, rather than the result of plane impacts? This theory, central to the notion of 9-11 being an inside job, has been a topic of hot debate. The contention is that the way the towers fell is more consistent with a controlled demolition than with the impact of two commercial airliners. However, experts across the globe have debunked this claim. Structural engineers and demolition experts agree that the tower's collapse was consistent with the known effects of directed, high-speed impacts and subsequent fires. The magnitude of the impacts and the heat from the burning jet fuel weakened the building's steel structural elements leading to a progressive collapse. So, while the idea of a controlled demolition may seem intriguing, it does not withstand the weight of scientific scrutiny. As we traverse the landscape of these theories, it becomes evident that discerning fact from fiction is paramount. While intriguing, this theory crumbles under scrutiny, much like the towers themselves. What if it wasn't a plane that hit the Pentagon, but a missile? This question underpins one of the most debated narratives surrounding the events of September 11th. The Pentagon strike has been the subject of intense speculation, with some theorists asserting that the damage was not caused by a commercial airliner, but rather a missile. To assess the credibility of this claim, we need to scrutinize the evidence. According to the official account, American Airlines Flight 77, a Boeing 757, crashed into the Pentagon. This narrative is backed by numerous eyewitness accounts, forensic evidence and the grim discovery of passenger remains at the crash site. In contrast, the missile theory struggles to provide tangible evidence to substantiate its claims. It relies heavily on conjecture and the interpretation of grainy, unclear images. As we peel back the layers, the missile theory appears to be more shadow than substance. It's a stark reminder of the importance of discerning truth from speculation in the pursuit of understanding. How do these conspiracy theories gain traction and influence public opinion, you may ask? The answer lies in the peddlers of controversy, those who find a platform in the chaos of conspiracy and amplify it to the masses. Take for example Alex Jones, the influential host of InfoWars. A self-proclaimed thought criminal against Big Brother, Jones has long been a purveyor of conspiracy theories, including those surrounding 9-11. With his dramatic rhetoric and fiery delivery, Jones paints a picture of a world mired in deception, where shadowy forces plot against the common man. In this narrative, the 9-11's attacks are not the work of foreign terrorists, 
but an inside job orchestrated by the very government sworn to protect its people. Jones is not alone in peddling such theories. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, a staunch supporter of the far-right QAnon conspiracy theory, has also questioned the official account of 9-11s. While her comments have sparked controversy and condemnation, they underscore the broad reach and influence of such narratives. But what is the impact of these influential figures disseminating conspiracy theories? On the surface, they challenge the status quo, encouraging their followers to question the official narrative. But scratch beneath the surface, and a more troubling picture emerges. These theories sow doubt and mistrust, undermining faith in institutions and fostering social division. They divert attention from the real issues at hand, replacing substantive dialogue with sensationalism and conjecture. Furthermore, they can lead to real-world consequences. From harassment of innocent individuals to violent acts spurred by unfounded claims, the spread of misinformation can have dangerous, even deadly, repercussions. As we've seen, these theories are often more about politics and power than about uncovering the truth. They serve as tools for those who seek to sow discord, to gain influence or to push a particular agenda. In the end, it is the truth that suffers, obscured by a fog of misinformation and manipulation. The challenge, then, is to pierce through this fog, to question, to investigate, and to demand transparency. Only then can we hope to separate fact from fiction, reality from conspiracy. In the face of such controversy, where do we find the truth? We find it in the annals of history, in the pain etched into the hearts of those who lost their loved ones, and in the resilience of a nation that refused to be broken. The profound loss of September 11th is not a playground for conspiracy theorists, but a solemn reminder of the atrocities that man can inflict upon his fellow man. Yet, it is essential to scrutinize historical events, to question, to probe, and to seek the truth. Not to propagate baseless theories, but to ensure that the narrative we pass on to future generations is grounded in reality. As we remember this fateful day, we must honor its legacy by seeking understanding and resisting the allure of unfounded claims. For it is in the light of truth that the shadows of deceit are banished, and it is in the reckoning of reality that we find our path forward.